Hi. 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 Welcome to Macintosh Librarian Labs. This is a little segment that I'm separating from the main Macintosh librarian so that I can talk about some modern tech upgrades that I'm going to do to my 2017 27-inch iMac. Right now this is running an i5 and I'm going to be upgrading it to an i7 7700K. It's currently running 64 megabytes, oh, sorry, 64 gigabytes of RAM and I have a Thunderbolt 2 terabyte NVMe SSD that I'll be making internal. And this is actually my first time working on a Mac with that sealed, so I'm gonna have fun cutting the seal on this. I'm gonna be using this cutter wheel that I got from the iFixit kit. It will allow me to cut the adhesive off the side of the bezel and will let me take off the front glass. But first, I'm going to put tape here so that the screen doesn't fall off. And I will be using this wedge, I fix it wedge, to keep my Mac from moving around too much. So you go here, and uh, cutting it like this, back and forth. I feel like I'm cutting a very expensive pizza right now. Hi, this is Kate from the future. Most of this video is just me fast forwarding right now, trying to cut through the iMac, being extra careful not to break the glass. Since this is my first time opening one of these sealed iMacs, I was very, 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 very extra careful. So I already took off the speakers and now I'm working on taking off the logic board. So this video is not meant to be a step-by-step. -step. It's just showing how I open my Mac and documenting my experience doing this whole processor change out and also upgrading the drive to an NVMe. Step 54. So these all have different sizes. Well, some of them, there's pairs. So there's actually 12, 12 different screws of varying sizes. So I'm making sure that I have them stickied and labeled. Again, this is all in the iFixit thingy, so I'm just following it. If you want to follow along, that'd be awesome. Okay, so I was probably being a little too meticulous with these screws. Uh, honestly, this took me a lot longer than it should have, but I was marking down where all the screws went on little pieces of tape and making sure that I didn't lose anything. I wanted to make sure that when I put this Mac back together, that I wasn't using any of the screws in the wrong places. And I finally got that motherboard out, after a few minutes of fiddling with it at least. And yeah, so this is the 2017 iMac logic board. I need to get the heatsink off so I can change the processor and change out this NVMe SSD. It already has 64 gigs of RAM in there, so I'm gonna leave that there. So here is the GPU bracket and there's the CPU bracket. The GPU bracket is easier to take off, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that one first. And gotta take off these little adhesive warranty stickers that are covering the screws to the CPU heatsink. So these iMac CPUs are notoriously under a lot of pressure, thanks to this really strong backplate that are on these motherboards. So I went ahead and backed out each screw a little by little until I was able to get a screw out and I was able to take off the backplate. Right, so now I'm gonna take off the heatsink. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. So here's the CPU still attached to the heatsink. We'll have to take that out and clean it up and put in the new CPU. Okay, I got gloves and some alcohol wipes. I'm gonna clean off this situation. So for the GPU memory, I will be using these thermal pads. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. I originally bought them for Raspberry Pis, but they work perfect for the IMAX GPU memory. So here's my eBay i7-7700K, which is a nice upgrade from my stock processor. 
I'm going to be using Arctic Silver MX4 as my thermal paste. And I went ahead and pre-censored this part since I don't want those comments. I probably put too much thermal paste anyway. So the GPU bracket went on easy enough. There's no tension there. It's a CPU bracket that's under a lot of tension. I actually had to use my nerd strength and bend the CPU bracket on the edge of the table to kind of relieve some of that tension. And I was able to do a crisscross screwing in situation and I was able to get the CPU bracket on. So now we're taking out the SSD. Actually, the iMac with the Fusion Drive in 2017 came with a 32 gigabyte SSD. I'll be using my pre-existing Sabrent 2 terabyte NVMe SSD that I already had in this Thunderbolt enclosure. Now that I put the NVMe drive in, it was time to reseat everything and get everything back into the chassis. One lesson learned through going through all this was to try to plug in an ethernet cable and a USB cable to the back of the logic board while you're screwing in the motherboard, or the logic board motherboard, you know what I mean. This will help align the motherboard to the case because originally I had issues where I couldn't plug in a Thunderbolt cable because not everything was just like a few millimeters out of alignment. So I had to redo everything, not fun. All right, so now I'm installing my one terabyte SSD, which is replacing the one terabyte platter drive that was in there before. I'm using this bracket adapter to adapt the smaller two and a half inch drive to the three and a half inch slot. I'm also using this OWC cable that goes between the drive and the Mac to send temperature information to the iMac. This will help the iMac's fans run at the proper speed. I just tuck the wires behind everything. All right. So now that we're getting things wrapped up, at least for the inside of the Mac, it was time to put the front chin back on and I took this off in the beginning to help me take out the logic board. I'm using some gaffer's tape to hold the screen in place. Then I'm making sure that I can plug in all the wires to the screen before I close everything. Right now I still haven't put the adhesive on, I'm still relying on the gaffer's tape to close it. And this is just so I can test it to see if the processor works. So here I am, waiting, waiting. Waiting. Oh. <sighs> Finally. That was scary. Well, that was awesome. We finally got the computer working. I was worried that I was going to take the logic board out and have to redo the processor. So I was really happy to see that it would boot on the first try. I used some OEM adhesive for the iMac that I found on eBay. And this stuff supposedly works really well and people haven't reported their screen falling down. So just make sure to clean off all the old adhesive, which I kind of cut out of this video. I left the gaffer's tape on just because I wanted the adhesive to set for a few days before I took it off. So overall, I was pretty impressed with the results. I saw about a 26% increase in Geekbench scores for a single core and about a 40% increase in Geekbench scores for multi-core. I know I realize these Geekbench scores aren't blowing anything out of the water, but it's a huge increase from what I had before. And it definitely helps with my video editing, especially when it comes to rendering some of the special effects that Mackie has to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again in another Macintosh Librarian video. Bye.